Mod Hub. We've seen already how the sequential circuit design process can be applied to a couple different situations. In this video, we will add one more, a stoplight controller. Our task is to design a controller for a stoplight that operates on a timer and also responds to emergency vehicles. Some more details. It will have three different lights, red, yellow, and green. When the emergency signal is sensed, such as when an ambulance siren is near, then the light should jump straight to red. Also, we will assume that there is hardware already in place for a timer, which will send a high signal at the right times to indicate the light should change. Note that in this simple design, we are only looking at one direction of lights, and not four lights interacting at a four-way intersection. Based on this description, try your hand at drawing the state diagram. Pause the video while you do. Here's my state diagram. There are three nodes, one each for green, yellow, and red. I've chosen these two-bit codes for the state memory. There are two input signals for each of the arrows. The emergency input is indicated before the comma, and the timer input after, with one representing an active signal. In the case where neither input is active, the arrows loop back on the current state. Green stays at green, yellow stays at yellow, red stays at red. These would be the most commonly used arrows, right? A stoplight would make a quick change to green and then wait there for several seconds, which might be several thousand clock cycles, depending on the clock frequency. Any time that the emergency signal is activated, the light should change to red. This is why the one zero arrows all point to red. Any time that the timer signal is activated, the light should move to the next light in the sequence, green to yellow, yellow to red, and red back to green. There is one input combination I haven't drawn, 1-1. One, one. This would be the case when both the timer and the emergency inputs occur simultaneously. We certainly could explicitly design for that case, and would probably do so by sending the state straight to red. However, I am choosing to consider those as don't care conditions, for two reasons. First, it is very unlikely that those two inputs would occur simultaneously. Secondly, even if they did, and my design had a strange blip, like jumping from yellow to green, that blip would only last for one more clock cycle, so maybe one thousandth of a second. On the following clock cycle, the emergency input would still be active, and the light would turn red. With the real design work done in the state diagram, we move on to the procedure. This time, I choose to use T flip-flops. At this point, try to make the next state table on your own. Pause the video while you do. Here is my completed next state table. Note that each state appears in three rows, three greens, three yellows, three reds. This is because there are three input possibilities, active timer, active emergency, or neither. The state diagram tells us exactly what each next state should be. For example, yellow turns to red when the timer signal is activated. And lastly, the T columns are determined by the changes in the corresponding flip-flop. In this row, Q1 toggles from 0 to 1. Therefore, T1 must be high. Take note of a nice feature on this table. There are four inputs, which means there will be 16 squares on the Carnot maps. But there are only nine rows of the table. This means there will be seven don't care conditions on every Carnot map. Take advantage of this as you try to derive the Boolean equations for T1 and T0. Here are my K maps. I list the present state inputs at the top, then I fill in any don't care conditions. The state code 11 never occurs since there's not a fourth light. Therefore, this whole row is X's, and that appears on the T0 table as well. 
Now I can fill in all the ones from the T1 column. This leads to the equation down here. The same process is repeated for the cases where t0 equals 1, and that leads us to this equation. But wait, didn't I say there should be seven don't care conditions? Yes, this is an intentional mistake in the slides. Well, mistake is too strong of a word. My equations are still correct, but are overly specific. They could be simplified further. I should have also placed x's in the 1, 1 column, because of my assumption that timer and emergency signal will not occur simultaneously. There's still an important thing I'm yet to consider in this design, the output logic. In our previous examples, there was just one output to deposit the gumball or to say that a sequence has been achieved. But here, there are three outputs. Each of the three lights needs to know exactly when to be on and, just as important, when to be off. There is a simple way to do this. Decode from the state codes. This means that when the state code reads 0, 0, then the green light should be on. Therefore, the equation for green light is Q1 prime, Q0 prime. Similarly, when the state code reads 0, 1, the yellow light should be on. Therefore, its equation is just Q1 prime, Q0. Likewise, the final equation is ZR equals Q1, Q0 prime. Here we see the final circuit implemented. Note the output logic just discussed as AND gates on the right side. Also note that this next state logic at the bottom uses the less simplified equations because of my don't care mistake. The fun thing about this design is that it is visually satisfying we can see how the light turns from green to yellow when the timer is activated. And then again from yellow to red. And then again from red to green. We can also see how it jumps straight to red when the emergency signal is activated. But most of the time, neither of these inputs will be activated and the light remains at its current state. Would you consider this a Mealy or a Moore machine? To answer that, focus on the outputs. None of the output logic gates have an input of XE or XT. They are purely a function of the state memory, which makes this a Moore machine. Another thing to note is that there is no strobe D flip flop before the outputs. It's unnecessary in this case. Since this is not a Mealy machine, we don't have to worry about changes in the input signals directly changing the outputs. Also, for the stoplight application, there is no good reason to delay the output, i.e. make it wait an extra half clock cycle. That concludes this design example. We have covered three categories of sequential circuit designs, Vinden machine, sequence detector, stoplight. But there's no limit to the application of sequential circuits. You can dream up almost any function you want and follow the given design algorithm to achieve it. Keep in mind, however, that these examples were purposefully simple, only requiring a couple flip-flops for memory. The more complicated your design, the more flip-flops are needed, and the lengthier your next state logic might become. Also, there are other design wrinkles, like choosing a different sequence of state codes, and the issue of input signals not aligning nicely with the clock. We'll explore these more in the next lessons.